How did we end up in this situation? She was, she was a bubble. She was an absolute bubble. She was so fun to be around. You never quite knew what was going to happen next. I, there are so many great, funny, awesome things about Granny that I could say, but long story short, she's just the best, an awesome grandma. Oh, she's just a, you know, likes interesting things, people, places to go. If there's something there, let's go and have a look. Yeah, she had lots of followers. Lots of men coming round and actually fighting in the front yard over her. I remember that. Who goes to Liberia or goes across the country? We went across Canada, parts into America, and ended up in Florida for a nine months road trip. Mum's brought us up. And I love about mum, the love of life, of faith, of beauty. Mum has been diagnosed with ALS, otherwise known in North America as Lou Gehrig's disease. It's an endocrine disease through the central nervous system. And from that, the muscles are not able to take input from the central nervous system. And the muscles themselves are deteriorating. Well, they said you had tea. Yes, I do have well, tea. No, no, I do have tea. I just don't spend money on coffee at this time of day. I buy it at lunchtime. So mum was diagnosed with ALS um, in about, about February. It took a long time finding out what, what it was. I fell flat on my face on my daughter's birthday on the ground. Couldn't get up. It was just flat. And I'd never fallen flat like that before, so I thought I might have had a stroke. Fell onto the ground on the sidewalk, and people thought, oh, look at that old drunk lady, oh dear, we'd better go and get her up. And they dragged me home. And then, that was the seventh time, the eighth time, Andre said, that this is ridiculous, we are going to the hospital. And I went there and they put the halter on me, to check the heart and the brain. They never see such a brilliant brain. They did mention that. And a golden heart, they mentioned that. And um, I said to him, look, I'm really fed up with everything. I think I have Lou Gehrig's disease. And then he was looking at his computer. He said, do you want me to be very, very brutal? I said, of course, but put that computer down and look at me. If you're going to talk to me, look at me. And he said, yes, you have Lou Gehrig's disease. And I said, well, OK, does it hurt? He said, it doesn't hurt. It's just very um, debilitating. And I said, can I still travel? He said, yeah, if you get in trance. I am a finance and resource consultant, and I have been that since I was 35 years old. And that's when I started my own business called Labri International. And the main thing I do is sell gold. She was on the phone a lot, with a long cord. We had all kinds of technical things with phones and faxes. And, you know, Mum would fly me to school, elementary school, in a helicopter. I mean, that's kind of fun. I mean, it was fun. I was sitting at on the top of a mountain where we had been doing helicopter training for the school that we had. And I said to the, one of our students, I cannot continue flying helicopters. It's too risky, I'm a single mum. He said, well, what do you think you can do 
just look around you, what do you see? And I saw fields of gold because I had thrown the stakes out of the helicopter where all the claims were. So I knew where all the gold was. I thought, I know how to buy gold and sell it. So I had $3,000 and went back down, picked up the $3,000 and flew to the first site to get the gold. But it wasn't always easy to get the gold because there was great competition even then. And it was only $60 an ounce then. And then I went back to Vancouver and saw the kids, made sure they were okay. They were being looked after by my best friend Joan down the road. And then I would then go to people I know and sell the gold for two weeks on my credit card, fly back to the Yukon, get more gold. So I went did that for six months. Sometimes business trips were in New York or we go to Luxembourg. The first time I had, I got a little tipsy magic mushrooms together my very first time in California looking over the Malibu mountains we were up there on the hillside over looking at the stretching ocean and the ocean became um, tail feathers of a peacock but mom really brilliant I mean you would look in a she would teach me to look into a pansy flower and look because if you look closely as mom would say if you look closely and carefully you'll see the little face of the, the fairies Hi. Hi. Here, I'll put the lights on. Hi. Julie's on? come. Good morning, Suzanne. Good morning. How are oh, you? You have to step back, step back. Why? We have to get that sponge to put the floor. What is it? The oh, there's peepees on the floor? Yes. Oh, <laughs> Hang on, I have to get the... There's bed is hanging up. Oh, hang on, why don't I just wet it or something? What's the matter here, Mum? We'll see. We'll see how you guys do I it. I don't see anything. Is that going up? Can you feel it, yeah. Mum? Is no, it going up? or? You're in the wrong place to start with. Your head needs to be up here. But that's the problem. She slipped. Well, no, we're... Are we men? Well, have you okay. got all the attention we're trying to... this morning? <laughs> well, yeah. Nicholas, show us. Show the lady how I mean, you can do it, do it at the back, but you're trying to do it when you're on your own. Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah. It's a funny shape okay. you've got yourself. But okay, I'm but... still not sure what you're trying to do. Okay. Try... I'm under the impression you're trying to get the head further up the bed. No, now you're saying you're trying but to But now the whole bed's maybe to too bed. high. Well, what are you trying so, to do? Uh, like that. <laughs> then... I sit here, making so she doesn't oh, yeah. fall back. And then I go, pole. And she goes, pole. <laughs> Someone produces the pole. And the pole is uh, produced. And, and then, and then, I then go. we have a little bit of an orientation and like, relax. Not, not Breathe, are you ready? ready? And then mum says, yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> and I proceed yeah, to lift mum. And, mom, and, and oh. we go like this. And, and then mum like, stands oh. and we do whatever we're doing. Transfer so I'm transferring to the big toilet. But I don't know if you figured it out. Yes, I did figure it out. And it was... <laughs> no, no, you could. <laughs> okay, so thank go. you. Got this to hold on to. Whereas if it's here, she doesn't have another anchor. Yeah, why would I do your What? <laughs> okay. Happy now? <laughs> nice posture. Oh, yes. Excellent. Excellent posture. Excellent. You do you know or do you not know? Do we have to go through all of this? We have to go through it. We have to go through because all of this. Because then we have to go repack it and we'll go, this stuff goes in storage and this stuff goes into. But why would you put it in storage? Because there's no room here. Why even keep it? Because she wants it. And Mom wants to be around. I'm putting it real bluntly. Okay. Putting it really. What going to do is go to the liquor store, get some cardboard boxes, and then we will put things in it that we take to Sally Ann. Right. Or storage. The mum could it's sit. Raining, could yeah, sit it's pouring with rain, it's cold and you cannot sit outside and when you're not sorting outside it will get all wet. <laughs> but we mum could sit inside and we could bring the box inside. Well you can sort upstairs in, in your living room if you like. Because you said you didn't want it all down here. So it's not overwhelming. Totally up to you. Okay, it's up to me. It's up to you. Let's go upstairs. Get the white coat and put my shoes on and then I'll go upstairs. Because we can sort out the clothes later. Get the white coat.
about attacking anyone. Why are you touching it? Because it drove me nuts. Well, it's nothing there. It's just a little bump. Okay. Okay. The cream goes on the head. What did, what's the cream for? To keep the eyeballs superbly... <laughs> Uh, what a sweetheart. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. So, hey. Hey, dude, how you doing? Good. It has been a complete lesson of learning to be patient and to be able to help other people with my communication. Maybe that's my final lesson to be able to communicate with people and then teach my grandchildren how to communicate with people. Because if you can start young, there's more chance that when you're old, you can get the message across to people. Anytime now would be great. <laughs> what are you doing? You're just standing there suffocating me. Hurry, hurry. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can see me. One really funny thing that I thought was funny, went on for two or a week, is Granny thought butthead means ram, like a goat. Because I said butthead in front of Granny once, and then she said, oh, that's a ram. That is a ram. And I'm like, no, Granny, it's just, uh, fig it's just a, uh, it's just a word. We'll be talking about something like, like a uh, something bad or something bad happened, like a nuclear bomb or like who, who knows what, something bad. And then Granny be like, Oh yes, I remember that because in the war when the bombs were dropping, and we just go on. It was funny. She was obviously the firstborn. She obviously used to look after me when I suddenly turned up, well, even though she was, what would be she before? Um, she was obviously helping my mum sort me out, toilets and all that sort of stuff, I dare say. Um, but later on, I suppose it was okay. We used to argue and fight now and again. Um, but she was a bit spoilt because she was the first and obviously had the attention and suddenly I turned up. So I dare say she um, used to beat me up. Pandemonium. No, so we um, used to go out up the, what was called the Loggy Pond. It was, it was a pond that was about half a mile away from the house because the garden was a quarter of a mile long. And we always used to go up to this pond and catch sticklebacks and muck about generally, which is good fun. We all went up there. She was with her girlfriends. And they would come round now and again and have parties. She was gone, so we didn't see much of her. But when she was around, she was always a bit of fun. Whether she would appear, disappear, who she, who she would appear with, under what circumstances. So it was always a guessing game, but it never got, um, you know, it, she always made it fun. She was hilarious. She had a lot of boyfriends, a lot of followers um, when she was getting older um, because she was a pretty girl. Um, so, yeah, lots of, lots of men coming round and actually fighting in the front yard over her. I remember that, two guys. Um, yeah, she had lots of followers. I use this walker, which is okay, but I like it best if I have a strong man on my left arm and then I just lean on him and I can walk. I can walk a long way like that. What about hobbies? Hobbies, oh, I've got lots of hobbies. Woohoo. <laughs> okay, the hobbies. <laughs> One of them is the study of sex. So you could say, why would you study sex? Erotica is very well written works if you read the classical erotica. And I, I think sex was a 
No, what wasn't was, is a very important part of my life as a hobby. Well, no, it's not a hobby, it's an um, occupation. <laughs> Who's that? Move that box. Move the box. Stop it, Felix. It doesn't happen instantly. I just wanted to say that because I'm on camera, so I wanted to be like all weird. Oh, like all bossy? Yeah. Okay, do it. Move the box. Now, move it, Mom. <laughs> Please, Mom, move the box. I'm not going to up. No, don't. Like a ah, okay, wait. What are we doing? Here okay. we go. Granny's going to have go. her first nice ride up christening the ride up the ramp. Oh, 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 oh. And Granny's never been up this. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Standing, you're fine. Get the feeling of standing up. No. One last go. Watch this. One last go. I promise. If this doesn't work. <laughs> just <laughs> It's funny. It's like you're a spider. gifts and all the jewelry stores but I said look I just bought this gold I would like you to make it into a small a, a small heart and it was always exceedingly hard having both of you away so I decided to take you to Africa. Having this stuff going on with mum has, has just made me realise how important it is to be a part of a community. I'm finding this ailment very, very hard to handle. Mum has always looked to take care of others, and, and, sh and there comes a time particularly when you're, you know, a divorced mum with two kids, to, to, to lay up your boxing gloves or your, your shoes 
and now accept that it's time for you to be taken care of by somebody else. And it's frustrating for me that mum has always, you know, evolved and lent into situations where she is the giver, where, where she is the stronger one, where, you know, and that's just the way she is. From her, you know, when we were at the doctor's appointment, her own, her own general doctor, uh, she, uh, he asked her, how are your spirits? And she said she drank them all. And that sums up a lot about mum. Well, I, I thought that mum is, when she's so-called fussy or particular about how she wants to be tucked up or the way she wants things, I think it's, personally, if I was to guess, if I was in that place, it's just a small thing that she can do to find control for herself and to make herself feel like she's doing something. My brother pays for night care, so thank God for Nick because he's keeping this going financially. I, I haven't spent time with Andrea very much over the years. It's usually been in the context of a holiday and coming back here to see everybody, uh, which is great. Uh, but this has really brought us closer together in beautiful terms. And so I see her as my only sister, my only other kin in this world. And that's a beautiful thing. I love my sister so much. I know what makes me happy. Seeing, seeing Andrea in the morning, I believe in her now. She's so Just to see, it sounds so corny. It sounds so, a little bit corny, but to see Andrea in the morning and give her a big hug and see Nicholas, who was always wonderful. If you know, when they when they were being brought up, I'd see them, I'd say, oh, hello to my little angels. And we always, I didn't ever get cross with them, hardly ever, because they're little angels. So that's the most wonderful thing, seeing the two kids. what the word communion, Kate, comes from? Commune, to come together with, with God. Commune of the Spirit. So if people's spirits would come together and link in a loving way, the world would be a better place. Like the sun